Burnout, lack of interest, procrastination, especially the latter is probably the biggest challenge you have. I don't think there's anything harder than sitting down to an empty uh, screen and trying to put actual words onto a page. And so uh, my biggest strategy is um, basically turning everything else off and forcing myself to actually focus. I don't think writing is the sort of thing that you can do in small little five minute increments, especially in this modern world where they tell you, uh, that you constantly have to be multitasking. You just can't write in that sort of a world. And so I turn off my my email. I uh, turn off all of the, any, any sort of reminder that's gonna tell me to do anything and uh, sit there and try to force myself. And even at that point, then it's it can be extremely painful <laughs> to, to, to not procrastinate. My mind is constantly racing, trying to think of something else that I can do in general. And so often what I like to do is I like to, uh, so I, we, I write generally scientific research articles. And so what I'll do is I'll focus on an easy section. So usually something, I'm a physicist, I'll work on the methods because the methods is simple. And what it does is it just gets me to start flowing things out. And once I start writing, then maybe I'll tackle something which is usually grueling, very hard, like the abstract or the introduction where I feel like I have to be clear, but it's sort of like a way to stretch and then once I've stretched a little bit, then I can start actually writing something. And I find that the abstract is actually uh, perhaps a great warm-up exercise because what it does is it forces me to synthesize my thoughts and try to explain them all within uh, five, six lines. And if I can't do that, there's no reason for me to start writing. And so I usually try to hone an abstract and I go over and I go over that quite a bit. It's basically my elevator pitch where I'm trying to sell this stuff to myself. And I find that helps a lot. And then a lot of the rest of the paper comes much more naturally. Yet every time I sit back down, I got to kind of get over this as well. I got to sort of warm up, stretch, and then start writing. I think there's two things that you have to definitely do if you want to be uh, successful at writing. One thing, at least I see in the better writers, is they read a lot. And I think uh, you can't really write unless you read. You might be able to argue that, but I don't think it's true. And I think the best writers read quite a bit. You read nonfiction, you read fiction, you read all sorts of things. It really helps you to learn how sentences should be formulated and what makes a lousy sentence and what makes a much better sentence or, or story. And the second bit is even though you're writing a scientific paper, I mentioned that's the sorts of things that I, I write and all my students will be writing, you're telling a story and at least in the good scientific papers, you're telling a story and you want people who are reading it um, to actually follow uh, the story. And so, I mean, maybe in you know some postmodern novels these days, that's not the goal, but overall, I think uh, in most of the literature I enjoy, there's, a, there's some sort of a story and you want people to be able to follow that story. And you want people to actually understand the story, which uh, not everyone who writes scientific papers is uh, targeted towards doing, right? And so, you know, you need a nice introduction that warms people up. You need to sort of build that story and you need a nice sort of conclusion at the end that sort of wraps everything up. And uh, so thinking of it more like actually telling a story to the reader, I think helps to frame your writing and improve it significantly. <laughs>